everybody. Thanks for hanging out for this last installment in the book of Ephesians. We're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 6, the armor of God passage. So we're going to jump right into it. Ephesians 6, starting with verse 10. It says this, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. The armor of God is comprised of key faith elements that when used in tandem will create an absolutely impenetrable force uh, against the enemy. And so I want to look at these elements just briefly. The first thing that he tells us is to put on the belt of truth. I always talk to my students about how that when the enemy comes at you with a lie, you're able to take that lie when you know the truth about God and you know the truth about yourself, you're able to flip that lie around and to be able to say, thanks for the lie, now I know the truth because I know what God has truly said about me. If you've ever been caught in a lie, then maybe you've said that you were caught with your pants down. And so we need to know the truth because the truth will set us free. The second thing that he says is that we would take on the, uh, the breastplate of righteousness. And it's not our righteousness. The Bible tells us in the Old Testament in Isaiah that our righteousness is as filthy rags. And that's, that's a good thing to know because I don't think I'll ever be righteous enough to be able to stand against the enemy. But when I'm clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, that becomes my breastplate of righteousness and I'm, I'm safe and I'm protected. He also tells us to uh, put on the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. It's very strange to hear the word peace in the midst of um, a, a passage that tells us that we should prepare for war by putting on the armor of God. But there's something incredible that happens when, when Jesus is our peace. Um, the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, he will keep in perfect peace the one whose mind is stayed upon him. So we can have peace in the midst of every battle that we face. Uh, one of my favorite authors says that you have authority over any storm that you can sleep in. Jesus stood up and he spoke out against the storm that he was sleeping in. The disciples had to wake him up because they didn't have peace, but Jesus did. He had authority over that storm and he spoke peace to it. And then it says that we should take the shield of faith uh, to, to be able to know that what I see with my physical eyes is never greater than what I can see with my spiritual eyes. Even though what's in front of me, what's directly in front of me may be scary, it may be daunting, I know that what I see with my spiritual eyes is more important and more powerful. That's that trust and that faith in Jesus Christ and who he is and what he said. Then he tells us to take the helmet of salvation. And I think this is important because so many times we get caught up in eternal salvation and we forget that we have present salvation as well. Salvation is not just something that we get when we die. We talked about that in Ephesians chapter 1, the inheritance. We also have salvation right now that he has provided help and he has provided hope and he's provided salvation in this present life. And so we need that for our hearts. We need it for our minds though. And that's why he says to put on the helmet is because the enemy knows that if he can win the battle for our mind, then he can win the battle. And so we need that helmet of salvation, that salvation now mentality that says that I have everything I need in order to overcome. And then he talks about taking up um, the sword of the spirit and the Word of God. And I love that these are two things that are together because we have Holy Spirit and we have the Word that we're together. We talked about in Ephesians chapter 1 how that when we just look at the Word of God as and we take it as knowledge, knowledge without uh, revelation and without wisdom is just information. And the one who brings that wisdom and the one who brings that revelation is Holy Spirit. So when the sword of the Spirit um, when the sword of the Spirit and the Word of God work together, again, we have an incredible uh, piece of armor. We have an incredible weapon that is at our disposal. 
And then finally, he encourages us to pray, to continue in prayer, to continually be in communication with the general of the army. No good soldier goes out without keeping in communication with the general. By doing that, we know what God is doing, we know where he wants us to go, and we know what we should be doing. So those are just some thoughts on Ephesians chapter 6. God bless you. I hope this has encouraged you and given you some things to go back and study for yourself. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time.